Wow, welcome to Academy of Tone 144. As you can see, I'm back from my vacation, live in the studio, and I do what you want, uh, what you asked me for, do some noodling, <laughs> um, which is a pleasure because tonight we have the special topic of Les Paul gold tops um, that goes back to a theme that uh, is kind of my theme. I'm very interested in vintage guitars and vintage amplifiers, as we can see from the arsenal of um, gear just behind me. And I discovered when I was a teenager that some of the vintage guitars and amps have a certain magic that I'm totally um, excited about. Um, and I spent kind of whole my life, <laughs> all of my life, uh, to kind of uh, decode what's the ma magic that's happening with these beautiful instruments. The guitar I'm playing right now is an all original 1957 Les Paul Goldtop, which is the real deal. Um, we have seen prices up to 200,000, <laughs> maybe I did a little research on, uh, was it Reverb yesterday or was it, uh, no, our friends from Guitar Point Meintal, Germany had a guitar, I don't know what the price of this one, 120 only, well, quite affordable. Yeah, I, I have seen more expensive ones and um, some, whatever. So all I want to say is they have a high Price. And the reason for that is they are sought after. And the reason why they are sought after is, well, they are iconic instruments on the one hand, and there's only a limited amount of the real deal instruments in the market, which of course drives the prices up. And the other aspects that made it um, a sought after guitar was probably the tone. For me, I was always into tone and if I could get anything for less money delivering the same tone, I'm all in for that because that's more practical. Going on stage with such a guitar means you have a big responsibility for <laughs> what you bring on stage and you have to watch your instrument. You know, all my other guitars I can leave on stage and if somebody runs away with it, um, pff, no big deal besides my 61 Strat. But I always tell you guys, if you do that, there's Tony. Tony is my friend and he knows where you are and he will get you and he will get the guitar back. <clears throat> so this guitar belongs to a collector friend of mine, um, which I'm very happy to have access to this guitar. This guitar has also been kind of the reference to my own make of uh, 57, which is not a 57 because it's a 68. Um, Les Paul that used to have mini humbuckers and um, had a, an ugly color, but I used that kind of as a platform to um, mod, to pimp this guitar, to make it closer to this guitar. And this particular 57 is to me a real tone monster. Um, I can explain why, but um, before we go, into all the guitar details, I know that you are, or well, some of the guys were uh, interested in where I have been the last week or maybe two. Well, actually, I had a nice vacation and I want to show you a few pictures. If somebody can guess where I was, please write it in the comments. <laughs> I see in the comments here, Hardy O says, Tony is the name of the Apple tracker inside the Strat. <laughs> oh yeah. No, Tony is a real deal man. He he was um, he he was actually he's a security guy from a security company with a lot of uh, networks into other security um, companies. I mean, they do concerts, they do all kind of events, and their network is everywhere. And he he has been serving on a tank. And once I met him and, and his fist was kind of um, covered because he was knocking too hard. Well, that's Tony. 
And Tony is um, is a guy. He has the the heart at the right place because he's also a musician. So he knows what a guitar like my guitar means to me. So he would simply ask one question. He will find you with his colleagues, and then he will ask you, "Is this your guitar?" And then you have about five seconds left to tell you better not. Otherwise, Tony will solve the issue. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Back to the vacation. Um, yeah, it's it's great for me. I had I didn't have a vacation last year and, and COVID. I think my last vacation was 2020 and now we are on 23 already. Um, and the good thing about a vacation is you can stay away of most of the things. Um, also a little bit of social media, but not too much as you would uh, imagine because we all make posts and we all comment the posts and I even commented our last live stream and I was very happy about Kai and Julian doing the last live stream. I, I think they did very, very well. So I'm proud of my guys in the company. And um, for the time uh, to escape, I usually have places which are warm in the winter because Germany, while I was away, everything was under freezing below zero Celsius, which means minus four, minus whatever. And then some, some days, you know, of course I was watching the, the weather here back in Germany. So um, I escaped the last, um, you know, hard days of the winter. And now we have sunny weather. It's, it's still kind of nice out, uh, but it's still, but it's a nice cold. It's like plus five, six degrees and uh, sun, which is great. And then spring is on my wish list to come, but it's, it's happening. Okay, um, the good thing about a vacation for me is um, I can really decompress. I can really um, change my view on things and that kind of recharges my batteries and that brings up new ideas for basically anything because if there is less input I create more output and my brain can process a lot of things uh, there's no time to do it um, in a regular setting um, <laughs> what is this come, come, come here it's minus 22 in the morning fastest coffee ever five seconds uh -huh. Uh, where are you guys, uh, Adrian? Uh, okay, Transylvania, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, greetings to Transylvania. Um, I'm sure every place has its own beauty. Um, of course, yeah, minus 22. If it's, if it's not humid, if it's a dry cold, I've been to Sweden, minus whatever, 30. Uh, some Lund, blah, 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 Lund. I forgot about the name kind of in, in pretty north and uh, you know when we have really powder snow that's kind of nice too but here in Germany it's it's in between being wet and raining and then we have a few days of nice snow and then bleh, I, I, I'm not this kind of winter guy uh, the German winter guy so yeah I make this anyway um, we show you a few pictures and or, or maybe the, the the video of the place where I was staying because that's also something nice. I was not staying in a hotel. I'm not this kind of uh, corporate tourist. I, I always escape regular tourism uh, as much as I can. And I found a place where I really could do that. And the place was, yeah, kind of almost in the jungle. It had no windows and um, we had some animals. If you had something eatable in the place, they would go for it. <laughs> I could find some avocados with some teeth in there. They tasted great. <laughs> and, and it wasn't my teeth. So I learned that lesson. Next day, everything was um, hidden in plastic boxes, covered. Um, but um, nobody, except for some mosquitoes, were after me. Anyway, watch this little video about my place. Yeah, this was... The vacation stay, chilled dogs, rental car, 
very special place and yeah I show you the way ding 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 the kitchen sink the way to the rooms as you can see nice house tons of stairs watch it at night when it's dark a fireplace cooking coffee this is kind of the living room closets and this is something exciting no windows Ooh. <laughs> so we lived our whole vacation without any windows fresh air all the time also in the bathroom we had some animals eating the toilet paper <laughs> but that was about it as we can see nice waves and there's bedroom hey it was actually a really nice day so now you know what i like for my vacation anyway cheers Yeah, so this was the place um, me and my girlfriend stayed in and uh, there's a, a few things you should see. Well, <laughs> in the local um, village there was a nice restaurant, uh, a few nice places for street food and actually proper food and um, well, you see, I conquered <laughs> this place, La Blue Guitar. Um, ah, Paul Schlachter is pretty good, yeah, I have to admit. So if you can be more precise of where that place is, let us know. Um, Dominican Republic, okay, uh, okay, this was, this photo was actually taken for last episode because last episode we had the song um, Wish You Were Here um, by Pink Floyd and I thought my good friend Ben Grenfeld has a band called Drink Floyd and uh, this bit, uh, beer, this is of course wish you were beer. So <laughs> we had the president beer which is kind of common beer in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, as you can see there's all kinds of street food available and yeah, what, what other pictures do we have, Lucas? Yeah, there's more places down the street. Um, Maybe we have a few beach pictures left. Yeah, see? Uh, so if, and actually this was cool because can you see tourists? No. Um, honestly, there were a few on the other side, but um, nearly, you know, no problem. <laughs> Somebody writes, das war ganz klar Hamburg. Yeah, I'm sure, klang. Dock, clock 65. Uh, no, it wasn't Hamburg and it's not Duttweiler and it's not uh, Saarbrücken, definitely not. Um, it's in the Dom Dominican Republic. And here, this is another cool thing. On the beach, um, while swimming, um, also the horses that were not, they, they were free running. They were just free. And um, when you lay down on the beach, sometimes you hear some duk, 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 duk behind you. And it's a horse with nobody on it. Sometimes it's three horses, sometimes it's even more. <laughs> you have to be a little bit careful not to be knocked over or run over by horses. And if they want to kind of cool down, they also simply go in the water and, you know, have a little bath and that's it. So, yeah, this was some nice uh, experience. Um, I can recommend to make any kind of vacations one in, in, in a while. It, it, it is good to escape and have that uh, fresh view on things, which helped me a lot because I'm totally energized now. My mobile phone is full with fresh ideas uh, for all the projects. And um, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> Aha, I see more comments here. Okay, let's go to the comments real quick. Uh, Ma Marcia uh, Bonu 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 Marcia Bonu would say Francais peut-être. Okay, one German tourist uh, in a whole island <laughs> looks like HP's island. Well, I'm not H HP currently. HP is on an island with um, 
Geek, what's the, the guitar gear, uh, geek um, with the curly hair and some other YouTubers. Um, and they always like to have special events. I mean, uh, Henning Pauli HP is very much about doing special things. And he goes all the way, which I kind of like. Some people don't like his humor, but I know that behind his um, kind of little bit clown attitude, there is a very serious Henning. And I respect that side more than the other side. But hey, this is everybody uh, does his own thing. Um, yeah, somebody says most important that the batteries is, uh, are charged. Yes, that's, that's it. Um, Frenchman from Brittany. Wow, this... Are you, of course, Britannia in German. Um, I remember playing uh, in Br Brittany for, for the 70th anniversary of the D-Day when, uh, you know, the Allies uh, came to uh, Daytona Beach and kicked the, the German Nazis out, which I'm very proud of everybody who was into that. And I'm very proud that they asked me, a German, to put together an international band with a French singer, with American bass player, American singer, with a, a British singer, uh, with a German drummer from the Bundeswehr, military drummer, uh, was our drummer, with my Dutch friend Thijs van Leer on organ and flute. And we played for many different people, including veterans. And the, the biggest thing I will never forget is we played for um, Canadian parachuters that, um, and, and we played a lot of great songs, you know, with all kinds of different aspects. Um, you know, French songs, English songs, and even songs from that era of the 40s. Um, but when we finished our official program, we finished the show, we had to do some encores. And guess what happened? The veterans, 70, 80 plus years old, asked for Highway to Hell. <laughs> I mean, you know, how great is this? Of course, we all had a good, good feeling. And uh, yeah, uh, Omaha Beach, um, yeah, th th that's right. And this was, um, this was the year when Obama was there. Um, don't ask me five, six years ago or something like that. Um, when uh, Peyton Man Manning says Omaha, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I just remember General Patton, who was the commander of the troops that kind of kicked the Germans out in this area. And there were other commanders. Um, but hey, I'm not the military expert. So for me, <laughs> um, that's my, my little uh, thing about the vacation. Next week's episode, I will talk about strats. And then we will see some more things that I've done on a special strat on my vacation strat um, but um, yeah now Andreas Schinko says have I missed the Les Paul part no it's just starting right now okay um, this goes back to the fascination for the vintage guitar tone and the vintage guitar guitars um, so for me being a Strat guy, Les Paul was never tempting until I played my first real old Les Paul. This was back in last century when I was 15, 16, 17, whatever, probably 17. Um, because all the Les Pauls that I owned or played before I knew the real deal old school you know bursts or gold tops from 50s they were these Les Pauls that you can could buy you know 80s Les Pauls and they they were kind of very dull they had no sparkle they had no twang which I knew for my Stratocaster. My first guitar was a Strat. My second guitar as a teenager was a Les Paul. It was an Aria 
Pro 2, I think, copy. And it was not a bad guitar, but I, I couldn't connect to the guitar because I was missing something, which I didn't know exactly what it was back then. And since I was not into the high gain sound and just overdrive power chords, I wanted to have also a bluesy tone. I couldn't get that out of th that guitar. So then I picked up some Gibson Les Pauls from back in the 80s and none of these guitars had anything that excited me in a way that I enjoyed um, the, the transparency and the, I mean, it's a twang, something that a Strat has. Uh, I couldn't hear the, the strings. I, I could hear also always something muffly as, as the tone would be uh, close. Then I came to a music shop in Münster, Germany, and I picked up whatever, was it a 57 or 59? I think it was a 59 Les Paul, an old one. And there was the magic. And from that day on, I understood that also Les Pauls can have that magic tone that I was not finding in any other instrument. Okay, 30, 40 years later now, I know that first Gibson learned their lesson and they came back to the original recipe um, with the vintage hype. The whole vintage thing didn't exist back in the days. The vintage guitars were not so hot. I mean, people wanted to get, you know, some some Charvel Jacksons and, you know, Eddie was uh, the hero of the day and hair metal. And so Vintage Les Paul was something for blues players and blues was not even a big thing back then also. This was, you know, this, this kind of was over. The blues was big in the 60s and then there were 70s uh, raw bands and then in the 80s when I uh, grew up musically this was kind of the lowest uh, period for the vintage tone in history this is and after this um, it kind of came back good for me because I was kind of um, counter um, the counterpart, so I could get all my great vintage instruments at a time when they were not so hot and sought after. Um, unfortunately, I didn't buy that Les Paul from the music store in Münster because it was only 10,000 for a 59 Deutschmarks, for, which is like 5,000 euros uh, today or dollars or pounds since everything is kind of pretty much the same these days. Um, okay, with the inflation, let it be 8,000 or maybe even 10,000. But this was the price of the most expensive vintage guitar in the shop back then. I didn't have the money, so I couldn't buy it, but I knew that kind of tone magic actually exists. So, um, let me show you what this kind of guitar can do for you. Um, ah. hear these tones I have all the sparkle I have all the twang I have everything that I 
one from a guitar, which back in the days was more Strat because I could plug in my Strat into my Mesa Boogie that I had back in the days and or my Marshalls and I had some clarity like this and all the other Les Pauls that I could play which were affordable including my Aria were kind of muffled and this was not my cup of tea and this to me is the magic I was always after and the thing about a Les Paul versus a Strat is it has the shorter scale, okay, makes it play easier. I don't have a whammy bar, blah, 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 this obvious thing. But it, tone, if you have that twang and that sus sustain of a Les Paul, I mean, this is like, uh, if I go and, and, and do this. not bad so and okay here it is for me that's the real deal guitar um, and mind that 57 is the first year of the humbucker which is these are PAF humbuckers this is what people always talk about when they talk humbuckers and if you listen to that sound a humbucker had all the clarity and all the stuff they did afterwards over the years they were kind of modding these humbuckers to have more output to have more mid-range to give them the guitar a lot more aspects but they're lacking and losing the clarity that dynamic thing that i'm after and still am after um, and when that is gone the magic is gone for me and this is now why the PAF pickup is probably the, the holy grail in humbuckers for the vintage guys, okay? If you are a metal player, EMG, you know, 81, 84, these uh, pickups or, you know, some hot rodded pickups make more sense. That's a different world. But now I'm talking about the fascination of the vintage tone and the vintage guitars. And... I have played 57 Les Pauls and 59 Les Pauls, which are the bursts, which are even more expensive because the burst finished, um, you know, with all the flame tops, they were even more sought after in, I don't know, in numbers if they are less produced, but the bursts are usually the more expensive uh, guitars. The gold top finish, um, they could hide any kind of wood, they could throw in rests, bits and pieces and just glue them together and put some nice uh, gold paint over the body and who cares what is underneath. The good thing about these guitars, even whatever wood is used for that doesn't have to look good, but maybe sounds good. I'm pretty sure they didn't care about all that stuff, but the funny thing is most 57s I really liked and most 59s are different from what I prefer, which doesn't mean that the 59 suck in a way, no, but I found more 57s that I liked um, because they have the, I would say it's the Telecaster on steroids uh, ca character, um, you know, this kind of ballsy, twangy aspect in combination with the qualities of a Gibson. Um, yeah, here somebody, Sailor means, well, Kirk Hamill plays Gary Moore's uh, and Peter Green's old Les Paul. Um, PF might be cool for metal too. Well, um, that's, that's correct, but um, if we're talking <laughs> um, about Metallica, uh, my hero is, I mean, Kirk Hammett, makes a good job but to me he was good at the beginning and then he didn't learn anymore which is kind of a cr very cru crucial uh, 
analysis. Um, I'm um, I'm actually more fan of the singer who plays the heavy parts heavier than anybody else. Since I had to learn a bit more about uh, metal, I highly respect him. So, um, but back to Kirk Hammond, he, he at least um, uses a historic guitar that has been played by Peter Green, then given to Gary Moore, and now this guitar is still on stage with somebody that can afford it, <laughs> which is fair enough, because I mean he he th that's also something you have you always have to be nice and fair to the guys because they achieved something. Metallica is a great band. Without Metallica, this planet would miss something. Even me, as a totally non-metal guy, have have to tell you that songs like uh, "Nothing Else Matters" and uh, "Master of Puppets." are important songs in music. So tons of respect. And Kirk Hammett is part of that band. So all my respect for him and doing um, the thing with that famous guitar. Um, so what is it? this? Some people in the stream here. Is this brown source in the back? If you want to sell it, uh, no. Where's the brown sauce? I have a brown sauce. Where's my brown sauce? Ah, this one here. You're talking about. See, this is all the stuff that, that you buy when you go to trade shows. I bought this in the UK when the company pros was maybe starting. Um, yeah. Ah, here, I see the right comment. James Hetfield is the right hand man. Yeah. It, okay, one, one, one more comment to Metallica. Right hand. That, there are so many guitar players that don't have a right hand in this quality. And by the way, even Brian May from The Queen on Sheer Heart Attack, the drummer was playing the, the guitar. It was too fast <laughs> for Brian May. Which doesn't mean that Brian May is, is, is not a good guitar player. But there's a quality of its own in the right hand. And James Hetfield is the guy. He is the guy. Try to play Master of Puppets and then we talk again. Any of you blues guys out there, stop moaning about that thing. I have high respect for the te technique and um, what they could achieve. In this style of music, it is a quality of its own. Anyway, um, here, head filled downstrokes for hours. <laughs> Incredible player. I totally agree. Um, yeah. And... I have to admit, I'm not the best. We have Mani Zewe coming here on the 22nd of March again, and he is my local <laughs> downstroke master. We did the, 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 the metal riffs of the 90s, and Mani had so many riffs to show us, including some Metallica riffs. Um, we had to, to, to stop the episode after two and a half hours and leave the rest of the 19th, uh, 90s uh, for the next episode. The episode we came from 1990 up to 1992. So there's eight years left for the next two and a half hours on the 22nd of March. Anyway, so this is all the coming. Um, back to the vintage world now. Hey, Clarity, this is a neck pickup here. The next phenomena is, I can use the volume control.
increased the gain on my <clears throat> M1 vintage channel. And for the guys who want to get that tone, uh, just very simple. I, I was playing kind of six or so for the whole song. And uh, now I increased it to 10. Uh, the bass is rather low, three, the mids are on five and the treble is on five or six. That's it. There's nothing, there's no delay. There's just a built-in reverb. And this is all we're hearing with the blue box. And today I was using the Silver 112, which is the speaker of my beloved Princeton, which is in the back over here. This fellow, okay, if you can see it. Um, so that's the tone. Um, ah, and I'm using low gain, which is a, a nice thing on the vintage channel. Let me explain. It's like, um, Okay, this is how it would sound if I have no low gain. I can use this. Standard gain, then if I reduce it like to six, I have this sound. I can reduce even more to where well, I'm three. And this sound is great, but if I reduce here, which is kind of the low gain mode, I can increase the gain here on the amp. Dial in the sweet spot between the woodiness and the sparkle. So I have all sparkle, but I have enough gain. If I want more gain, That makes the whole thing sound a little bit bluesier. If I bring it all the way up here to, to standard gain. It sounds too much rock for what I want to use tonight. Okay, you know I'm a rock player. This guitar is easy, blues, metal, anything. And as we all know, metal too. Uh, so from, it has the full spectrum of tones, as wide as a strat, okay? But coming from the other side, uh, from the humble. The next aspect that I found fascinating is, you know, what, what I did show you with the volume controls on the guitar. So let's, let's put, you know, let, where I want it, so like... All the tones I'm getting from just using the volume control are totally usable and very musical. So, neck position, I put it on one. Nice and transparent. If I go in the in between position with both pickups, I get 
even more sparkle. <laughs> I increase both, as you can see, I do it with one hand. So, tons of great sounds at hand. Next aspect is the tone controls. These tone controls, using the original Bumblebees, sorry, uh, they are also magic because, listen to this, I just give you... And now I reduce the tone a touch. It even brights, brightens up a touch more. All the way up. And then when I roll it down further, I get that woman tone, you know, like... If I would have stayed just on the neck, you can get anything out of just one position. This is how flexible such a guitar is. And that's just like...
Okay, anyway, anything on the neck pick, uh, pickup. Let's hear the in between. In between, we have so many great tones as well. Okay, I start from zero all the way up tone controls. So now I put everything like on five. And this is almost. lot of great snappiness in the, um, in the tone just like a telly in between position and if you don't have that vintage quality in a Les Paul it's simply not there it sounds like somewhere but there is nothing that has that uh, you know I can sound like on a telly you know? Yeah, I see somebody is um, asking for the blue box. It's 67. No, uh, it is the silver uh, 112, which is um, my Fender Princeton. Um, it's the blue box on position. I don't know. There's no number. There's the jazz. Then there's the 112. Uh, tweet and the next one is the silver 112. This is what I'm using right now. I give you the tweet for a chance. The tweet is even snappier and nastier. guitar <laughs> um, okay but I was about to explain you the in-between sounds of such a guitar and um, let's start all the way up and then I reduce the volume like to half and we have that nice and sparkly and twingy so if I now reduce the tone on both also a touch even more sparkly all the way up because it kind of suppresses the mids a bit and it's all the way up it's fuller and then just dialing back a touch gives you the snappiness up to a certain point and then it's getting dull so this is kind of middle position and now it should get muffly. But you can hear how effective these tone controls are and this is, hey, that's all about tone. For me, blue guitar is tone innovation and there's tone in this guitar and there's tone in PFs and there's tone in these tone controls. And this is the starting point of humbuckers and I don't know why they lost it. 
and why we have to have people like Andreas Klopmann, uh, my dear friend, who had to analyze this guitar for ages and make me a set of pickups that kind of get me in the zone where this guitar was by nature. So some, sometimes we lose something because I don't know why. They shouldn't change this design. They did it in 1957 and if they would continue with the same quality up until today, the whole his history would have been much easier for everyone, um, I believe. Kirk Hammett wouldn't have paid that much money for his guitar. He could have bought any Gibson out from a music store and would have that kind of tone. Because, you know, even the 70s would be old enough to be played enough to have that vintage quality. One thing of vintage guitars also is if they have been played, they, they get better. If, if a guitar is not being used, um, it's, it's um, yeah, it's it's not helping the instrument so sounds in the in-between position okay I move on to the bridge position okay I start with a very low setting switch for my Marshall. Are the sounds you can find on the bridge pickup with a guitar from 1957 even before that kind of music was invented there's nothing wrong it has all the right frequencies to cut through and even with overdrive to give you all the punch that you want and if you are into more of anything it's easy to edit with a boost pedal with an overdrive pedal with a tube screamer or whatnot but the basic foundation in such a guitar is there. So, for me this was important to set the bar on what's going on here. Now back to a decent setting. for my 
fender esque sound. <laughs> my fender sound or you want a marshal nope, today i'm a fender boy <laughs> bridge pickup can be snarly like wow. and mean so this guitar has anything from yeah let's compare this so this is the holy grail i have my 68 converted with Klopman pickups and whatnot. Okay, let's start with neck pickup. I have all the cleaning up, but I don't have the balls. Bridge pickup on this one versus bridge pickup on this one. So, you know what time it is. This is the real deal. And back to a wannabe 57. Not bad, but it's like the vintage wine. This is already a vintage guitar and it has pickups that are really good. It is pickups made for this guitar to come close to this guitar. Anything that was used before in that guitar wasn't even close to what we hear now. And okay, my strings are a bit worn out and stuff like that, but I think you can hear enough that this is my, this guitar behind me is my favorite 1957 Les Paul Goldtop of them all. And I played tons of them. Um, so this was a bridge pickup. Let me do the thing in the in between positions. So. It does all of that, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's trying to following the line, but what is underneath the line 
is a different substance. And that's the guitar. And by the way, this guitar already has the RB, uh, S60s, what is it, RBR1 bridge, the real deal bridge. This is not even a standard um, uh, bridge. This is what kind of is what's on the 57 and the pickups. Uh, nice paint job. If you don't have the AB comparison, this guitar will sound great, no problem, but you can tell there's a difference. And if not, good for you, because then your life is a lot easier. A little bit of the neck pickup. favorite 57 so Again, um, one more time, and then you know why I was fascinated. As long as I have enough overdrive, I can hide it within the overtones of the saturation for my amp, you know? But I think the pickups show all the qualities of cleaning up, but then the wood of the guitar is not the same. I don't know if you can hear that. I can play it dry and then maybe... and then play the other guitar dry. It's hard to tell. I know it because I know that guitar so well and I know my other guitar so well. It translates. There is something that is a very clear, defined tone that has a uh, Eh, everything at the right place and that's this guitar. So, so transparent, Max Karten says. Hi Max. Um, maybe the pot and the wires are different materials. Guess what? I use the original bumblebees in there. I put in my guitar bumblebees. I use the, the, the correct braided wire and everything because of course I'm aware. I'm aware of all these qualities. So, what I've done is I have a no-name guitar that uses the same pots than this guitar and it uses the latest pickups.
not bad, you know, for a guitar that might cost less than a thousand or in between whatever. If you don't have a comparison, you can do it also with this guitar. But if you do, <laughs> you start and cry. <laughs> That's always what happens to me. Um... <laughs> And this guitar does do exactly the same thing, like when I reduce the, the tone here on the neck pickup, I get that clarity. So far the comment to, what was the guy's uh, name that did the the comparison, the guitar doesn't matter. Um, Tim, was it Tim? We did a thing on the amp, on his amp episode. Anyone, uh, the, the guy that did a YouTube video that the pickups are everything and the guitar doesn't matter. If that would be the case, this guitar would sound like the 57, the original one. Well, it doesn't and you can hear it. And uh, these pickups are probably pretty pretty good, at least at the price range. And this is um, a new pickup that I really like from my dear friend Trevor Wilkinson. He came out with the R-series pickup, um, best he ever made. And he also does pickups now with the original um, braided shielding and the original specs in the set lover machine that he bought from him, blah, blah, blah. Because these were the old pickups, um, sorry, that he, that he did, which have the cheapo cables. And trust me, the cables alone make such a huge difference. It, it's maybe sounding esoteric for you, but it is not. It, it is a huge difference. Let me show you a quick uh, video on this guitar swapping pickups from better ones than these that have been already modified with the real cable to the new pickups um, that we have here, the Trevor Wilkinson R-series pickups. Check out the video and the tone difference before and after.
this was a quick pit stop changing pickups. By the way, this were the new Wilkinson R series um, WVCR pickups for Les Paul. Um, yeah, what I like about these pickups is they have more clarity and I would call it more twang. <laughs> Yeah, so this guitar with a pickup change, I think, was a was a win. Um, I see in the comments, Poo Ninja and Hardy O. I was talking about Jim Lil, the guy that makes great videos. I'm totally fan of his video productions and how much time he invests into making videos and all the efforts he has done. But his his themes are basically good to start a discussion but in the end I have to disagree because um, as I was explaining in my AMP episode if it was, was that simple that it just is a pre-EQ, a clip and a post-EQ which is the foundation of any guitar AMP and that's it I wouldn't have had any problems with AMP X I tell you I do tons of way more sophisticated stuff to be able to get close to the real deal amplifiers and that this complexity is what makes the difference in tone if you don't hear it i'm happy for you buy whatever you can you can have a happy life because if you feel good if the sound is good for you whatever you have that's all what matters because if you feel good it will translate into the music into your playing and if the playing is fine hey this is all what people hear it will sound good for anybody as long as you feel good but if you have something that makes you feel better you play better and this is the reason why I got kind of too excited about vintage gear vintage guitars and vintage amps gave me that extra quality that enhances my music and basically also my, my playing and um, it's not that I play faster uh, I mean, any of these guitars, if they set up right, they will do the job of fast playing and they will not rattle and they will do whatever I want. But it is that tone. It's that extra uh, thing that speaks to me when I play the guitar and I interact with that tone, with that uh, complexity and there's more depth in it and I can find more colors while playing and I, I, it gives me more inspiration. Okay, sorry guys, that's my personal opinion. Some of you guys feel the same and some of you guys feel different, which is fair enough. But I'm just telling you my experience and why there's something out there. Tone is connected to feel. I can see this in the comments here, yeah. Um, is it voodoo? I try, I try to, to understand what's going on and demystify voodoo, voodoo. For me, it's not about creating voodoo and making lots of money with it. I'm not a vintage dealer. Um, I just try to learn from the good tone from whatever is around me, if it's modern or old or vintage or whatnot. But the point is, it should be a good tone, wherever it comes from. And then... I try to decode what it is. If it's, if it's the thing, what is it that makes that magic tone? And sometimes 
it's a speaker frequency or it's a pickup thing and I'm interested in where is it coming from? Is it the wire? Is it, I have checked the, the shielding on the neck pickup, for instance, on, on this Les Paul and on my Les Paul makes such a huge difference. So you can move the shielding because it's braided and it's not connected to the in, inside of the, of the wire. Um, that gives me, a tr I, I can move the shielding back a little bit <laughs> and I get more high end, like the hi-fi high end. And it's soft, it's great. Um, and if I want to have a more focused tone, um, I can have more shielding. It's, it's a capacitor. And just by having changing that, you can fine-tune your guitar to the needs, how, how you want it. And it is important that you have that wire for that vintage tone. And it is important that the length of the wire is right because that kind of all is a complete system. It's the pickup winding and it's the that stuff and it's the wires and it's the pots that interacts. And I haven't changed anything on the amp. So whatever amp and whatever brand you play, the guitar is a system in itself that interacts with first the amp and second in total with you if you are sensitive enough to react to tone. And um, of course that's a personal thing and tone to me starts in your head. It's like there is a tone that inspires you and you, you strive for a certain tone, you hunt that tone and if you are in the zone, you, st you can play with it. It's kind of riding a wave where, you know, in between clean and overdrive and overtones and tones. And time back for the real deal <clears throat> because a B comparisons is the only thing <laughs> Ask me how to improve this guitar. I have no wishes. It's everything at the right place. <laughs> so this is my number one go top, which actually belongs to a friend of mine. Um, but I'm very happy to have this in the house tonight for you guys. So there is another guitar that is also belonging to another friend of mine. Um, and that's a vintage, quite affordable Les Paul Burst Stout. But this guitar is the modded one with Klopmann humbuckers, which is um, very similar to my set. And the green wiring. Okay, actually this would be the better guitar for playing that song. I really can't com compare the in-between position because this is out of phase wiring, but... Thank you. 
A lot of magic here. And this is, well, a pickup set that costs more than the guitar. Um, but I know how this guitar sounded before the Klopmans were in there. And this opens up the, the whole door to being dynamic, you know? But again, great guitar and yeah, if you don't have an AB comparison, it's good. No, no question. You can get lost in this quality. <laughs> Okay, one more thing I'd like to do, if you don't have any questions, I will play all these guitars over the backing track. So just for you guys, you get a feel of how it is in the real world. Okay, backing track is off, should be on now, and here we go.
Anyway, so I think this kind of closes the loop from the beginning to the end. And we have missed one um, particular instrument in between. I don't have it here, but just to show you that I do care about anything that is available on the market. Um, we have a little video clip that I have done with Ben Grenfeld, my friend Ben Grenfeld. Um, again, M1 user, <laughs> and also a Les Paul expert. Um, and we've been to Music Produktiv in Germany uh, while being on tour together and spent a, a morning in the custom shop checking out some Gibson Les Paul custom shop guitars. And there was a 57, maybe two, and a 59 of these real good Gibson custom shop guitars. And trust me, nothing is like that. Let's watch that video. <laughs> Yeah, 
you can see custom shop guitars are also great, but nobody was cracking the code yet. Even Gibson themselves, they tried and they did a good job getting close, but the thing is still the real deal. And um, mind that also the hardware plays a role and but in the end is it is also the wood this guitar trust me it's a special piece of wood that has whatever magic um, resonances and it all comes together and this makes some of the vintage guitars to me the best sounding instruments available on the planet unfortunately they are so costly <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I would, you know, have them, I know what I like and I, I probably think that you by now also know what time it is when it comes to tone and uh, this is what the Academy of Tone is all about. Um, I tr try to make you understand that there are things you can look for. Um, it's not meant to be you know, I have it and you don't. It's more, I spent my life uh, hunting the tone, searching for the ideal tone and sharing this with you and using my experience for my amp designs and for the guitar projects that I'm doing uh, to give back as much of that good tone as possible uh, because I think some of that good tone is missing in today's products. And for me, it's about cracking the code of the original things, learning what it is, and then apply this knowledge to products that you can actually buy. Because this guitar is not for sale. It's just there and it sounds nice. If I could buy it, I would. Um, maybe I don't have the money now, but um, it's in good hands and it stays there. And trust me, not all the gold tops sound as good as this one. Uh, so don't go for any and just trust because it's gold, it sounds good. No, there is, there are difference. And even in the cheap guitars, I mean cheap compared to not cheap, um, you can hear differences. So, the wood does matter, the hardware does matter, the pickups do matter. Um, but if everything comes together, even some of the affordable guitars can have a good tone. And then when you go and want to have that next level, you have to get some old wood. I think that is something I have learned and maybe you could hear too. At least that's my philosophy. Okay, I see a few funny comments here. <laughs> Thomas, any plans for Les Blug? Well, always, I have always plans. I have plans for, you know, master builds and Les Blugs and Trevor Wilkinson is, is my friend and partner anyway. Yeah, there's, there's always things in the pipeline. But this is not the, this, this is not what it's about today. It's, today is about tone and making you aware of the differences. One more aspect about when you buy a affordable guitar and you like that guitar, there are certain things that you can really uh, that that you can make the that you can do to make the guitar better. So if there is shitty pickups, get decent pickups. These can be the high end stuff by Klopman or by, you know, throwback. I, I'm, I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to pickups, but there are some good pickups out there that can improve the, the guitar substantially um, just to get that end right. If there is shitty hardware, you can get a little bit more by investing something in the hardware, but just a bridge like this uh, alone costs as much as expensive pickups. So, again, the question is 
how much do you invest to improve your instrument and where does it actually stop? You know, we could put these original pickups into an affordable guitar and it would definitely sound pretty good. But it will never sound like this guitar with these pickups in this kind of body. Because my experience is everything has to come together. And if, if it's a happy marriage of body, neck, pickups, electronic, if everything is in the right order, this, this is heaven. And this is the case with this guitar. And yeah, that's my reference point. And I'm always striving for the best reference point because when I know what my goal is, I can do my own projects with my own Gibson guitar and try to come close there. And that's probably better than the average. So that's my method. So I see a few comments here. How about cryo tuning that can help? But we learned that um, cryo might be good for the wood and can be a little bit um, critical for hardware because it will kind of milden some of the stuff. So uh, you have to look into detail when it comes to cryo. This is what I learned. It definitely affects the tone um, and in a positive way for certain aspects. Just be careful with the overall idea of just one aspect solve everything. So if you have a shit in, shit out. <laughs> you have to, to know what you got and what, how to treat it. It's like cooking a meal. If you know this particular body has this kind of quality and maybe cryo will help to get this thing more alive. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan of one treatment for everything. But this is like if you are a good chef, you know you have that spice for this part and you have another spice for this part and you have this kind of process for the cooking. So the more you understand about the process, the more uh, defined um, you can use stuff to apply to your guitar and get the most out of it. Um, if you don't have all the detail knowledge, certain things might improve. Maybe the whole package will improve, but maybe you lost something because one part has lost something at the same thing. So you more, the more you know, the better it is. That's at least my creed and that's why I spent hours, literally hours, days and my whole life to talk to people and gather all this experience. Um, because for me it's fascinating. So I wouldn't, I would even do it if, if it was, wouldn't be my job, but I choose to do this <laughs> kind of from a hobby to my job. And I still like it because it's, as you can hear, it's still worth going there. If it would be all solved and I could buy it, you know, straight from the wall in the music shop, I could retire. No problem. I know where to go for verification <laughs> and have a good time too. Uh, I could focus on playing um, and, you know. Ah, I see a comment here. Do you think 50 variants with modern styles make a big difference? Yes, I do. Uh, Mimek Neyman says, I hate 50s wiring, losing too much bass, passive treble wiring is top wiring to me, plus retains treble on low volume. I love 50 wi 50s wiring, okay? So now we have two opinions here. Um, for the vintage tone, I think uh, 50s wiring is the... Um, is an, it, it, well, it's the essential part of it. But hey, it's only changing one wire, basically. Um, you can find this in the internet where to, to put the pickup to. It's a different load on the pickup. I'm the fan of 50s wiring. May Mac Newman is not a fan of that. Hey, if you have a soldering iron, give it a try. You will learn and you can decide. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Meeman. 
<laughs> we all have different, hey, this is fair enough. This is just about to inform you guys what options we, we do have and you choose whatever you like. And I'm happy for anybody that knows what he wants and goes that way. You know, I'm just kind of bringing up topics to discuss and share my opinion. Of course, I have my own opinion and I'm glad that other people have other opinions because we are all different and we are all having different ideas. Uh, so it's, it's not only one solution. This would be, would be simple. And the difference of 50s and, and, and modern wiring is no money difference. It's the same wires, it's the same components. It's just putting the wire on a different thing on a different uh, connection of the, of, the, uh, of the pot. That's all. Cost no money. It's just a matter of taste and you can do it. If you have a soldering iron, you can do it yourself. Yeah, okay. Um, Sela means, uh, says he is loving the uh, 50 wiring. It reduces the volume a bit uh, if you roll up the tone. Yeah, this is all this kind of interaction. 50s wiring is maybe more sensitive, has other aspects. But hey, the good thing is, as I said, we have the options and it has nothing to do about money, which is again the first starting point when you mod your guitar. If you have a guitar and you don't know if you like 50s or standard wiring, modern wiring, try it out. And if you like the other wiring better, you have increased your tone with no costs, nothing to buy, just having the time to spend on the soldering iron. Again, what's also super, super important is the setup job of the guitar. If I would put this pickup all the way down or too wide, too close to the strings, it also will affect the tone in a way that you lose some of the potential of the guitar. So all this comes together. Uh, and for me, it's letting you guys know there are options and where the ultimate is. So you heard the ultimate and you, 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 you kind of get um, sensitive to differences, what to listen for, what is, what is the magic. If it, this is all your, not your cup of tea, hey, it's, it's okay. Maybe the next episode will be yours because then I'm doing the same thing on strats. <laughs> um, or... The, the episode with Mani Tseva is, is your thing because he is totally not vintage. He is modern metal or, um, you know, metal uh, at least from um, all the different genres. And that's the good thing about the electric guitar. We can go from jazz to metal, blues, uh, funk, indie, hard rock, hair metal, uh, and what not it's it's uh yeah ah somebody wants to know the pickup height can we show that here on the camera i try i put down the string and they are kind of close um i would say i can put a two 1.5 millimeter pick one it's pretty close on this one okay um, maybe I have a thinner pick. I play all, all, always these big sticks. Ah, wait a minute. Ah, there's my wireless system for here. Let's get a the pick that isn't a pick. Can you see the camera? Ah, this one here. <laughs> Too much reflection. Anyway, it's stolen from Jeff Beck. So let's see. This is a thin one. This is less than a millimeter. I press down the, the, the last fret and this kind of pick is, I think it's a 70, uh, so 0 0.7 millimeters. And this pick is not captured by this. I have, uh, I hope I'm not switching off my, my radio unit for my voice. If you know, Final tap, listen to the sustain. Ah! This is my radio unit, but I only use it for wires. So this is a blue guitar pick, and these are more than a millimeter thick. And you can see this holds 1.5. 
it's I would say it's 1.2 millimeters or something like this. Uh, I'm talking about the cover to the string. A blue guitar pick, huh? Talking picks. This is the money silver metal pick. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the same tone. Huh? So different styles require different picks. But today's world, we were vintage. The blue guitar pick makes this guitar sound better. Okay, and Jeff Beck pick Ernie Ball is okay, but. This will be another episode uh, where we talk about picks and pick ang angles and all that stuff next time. Not, not next week, but uh, in March. I, on vacation, I had a lot of time to think about topics and guests that will come. So we have, um, we have uh, yeah, more experts, different point of views. Um, so we can learn from different people, different topics. Um, Okie dog. I think we have one more video left, which was, what was it? Number one. Ah. So, besides 1957 Les Paul, and this was the holy grail guitar for me for the last 10 years, I, or maybe even longer, as long as I knew this guitar, and I know a few other guitars that have similar qualities. One of them is the Diggy Betts guitar, Allman Brothers Diggy Betts. I played that one at number one Hamburg, which is um, the, well, it's a music shop that is known to, to have a vintage department for 30, 40 years. And I kind of bought my 61 Strat over there when I was 17. So this, you see that those guys are doing this kind of business for very long and they have killer guitars coming in and I have the pleasure and sometimes the pain <laughs> of demonstrating every vintage guitar that comes into the store. And Lucas, the video man knows already how it feels when I have 30 guitars and how lucky I am if there is one of those unbelievable Les Pauls or Telecasters or Stratocasters. And sometimes I feel so sad when I have to play jazz guitars because I'm the presenter. I have to present everything. So I'm kind of a reference point, but I'm not a jazz player. So I suffer. I suffer. I, I always think I suck. I play shit and all my jazz. There is no jazz chops with me because me no jazz, you know? Maybe, you know, the, the band Johnny hates jazz. It's like similar to me. Um, <laughs> But um, it's not that bad. I'm, I, I like jazz music, but I'm not a jazz player. So I have always a bad feeling playing the best Tangelico and other jazz guitars. But anyway. And then there are the moments where you get a guitar in your hands and you say, fuck, wait a moment. And I played a bunch of 59 Les Pauls. This is what they call the bursts. And then I played this one. So listen to that guitar if you have the chance. There is a few uh, videos out there on this um, uh, number one YouTube channel. It's called The World of Vintage Guitars. You will find this, of course, on YouTube. And uh, I don't know how many episodes I've done so far, but it's literally close to 100. 
at least it feels like uh, that to me. And I had the pleasure to interview uh, Rudolf Schenker of the Scorpions or for the Germans to play with Otto Walkes. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's, it's a great thing and this will continue. I will have more guitars and more interviews coming up um, on that channel as well. Um, I see Sailor, Dickie Betts, uh, Old Gold Top was a refinished Cherry Sunburst. Yes, correct. And I play that guitar and it sounds actually pretty similar to this one. And I played, I played some other Gold Tops which were different. But to, maybe it was coincidence, but I played more Gold Tops with these qualities than 59s. The 59 usually they all vary 58 59 they have a they are have a bigger sound somehow not as snarly and not as aggressive and taily on steroids kind of thing um, they have another quality but the thing is this particular 59 totally got me so at this point i'm torn between the two guitars and I can buy neither of them. Too bad, but I'm very happy to be able to get my hands on these guitars once in a while, learn from them, enjoy and memorize the tones for my own playing. At least I can take some of the notes in my memory back and bring them to the other guitars. Yeah, so what else do we have as... Um, comments here <laughs> nice nice one me no dress okay okay um, but he says interview with Johnny uh, Uli John Roth yes it's on my wish list uh, because Uli is also M1 user and Uli is a very very uh, interesting character uh, with a very intense history so since I know Uli we played a couple of times together in Mannheim and we did uh, uh, three guitarists with uh, Viktor Smolski, myself and Uli once and blah blah blah. So there were a few occasions that I played together with Uli live concerts. So that's that's a very nice guest. And by the way, it, at number one, he has a lot of his Sky guitars. So I, I know his guitars and I could play them as well. Um, Stefan Mandel, um, ever thought about making blue guitar Les Pauls? I think about a lot of things, but not uh, now it's MX time, okay? No talk, uh, was guitar plugins reviews? Didn't remember X will have an analog chorus or digital or both. The MX will be another topic. topic. Uh, it will have a digital chorus, which is the dry signal is analog, so it will sound as analog as possible. You will hear that very soon. Um, any thoughts on vintage uh, P90s list pods? Of course, because I have a 56 Les Paul Jr. with P90s upstairs, but I was just reducing this episode to gold tops mostly, um, because otherwise we open another uh, box of Pandora with too many other aspects. P90s could be another um, episodes. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Next week I will try to do the same thing on Stratocasters with of course my 61 original, my 64 original and some other strats. Let's see and what we can learn from Stratocasters. And now check out <clears throat> The other Les Paul in my life, which I can't God, get. I mean, we all have our dreams, so dream on. Well, I think this was Nazareth. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. See you next time. Watch the end of the show till next week. Cheers.
Welcome to the world of vintage guitars. This is a real beauty, a real 1959 burst. The real deal. 